Hi, welcome to Fiber Chats. My name is Irina. I'm the host here. And my guest today makes my life a little bit difficult with her name because it's a tongue twister. So it goes something like that. Karel Kalatraler. How did I do it? Karel Kalatraler, yes. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Pia. So like you, your name is actually Pia and that's the, your Instagram handler. Yes, this is much easier. Yes. Right. <laughs> How did you come up with this name? Like, what does it mean to you? Oh, this was uh, some kind of joke from my previous work in Estonia a long time ago and it stick to me. So now I am alias Karel Kaladraler as a knitter. <laughs> Well, let's talk about your childhood. So you were born in Estonia, you grew up there. And of course, Estonia is like, has the longest traditions of lace knitting and noops and all that good stuff. When did you start knitting? I think I was about uh, eight years old. Uh, my mom was uh, teaching me and uh, she did, she teached me basics how to cast on and uh, knit and purl and the rest came step by step. I learned it myself in, from books and, and uh, by the way, we had to knit in uh, school right. and we had some kind of lesson there that uh, we had to do all kinds of handicrafts, sewing and uh, crochet and uh, embroidery and so on. Right. So, so it grew. Well, do you remember what kind of projects she was knitting when you were growing up? Uh, all kinds of things, mittens and sweaters and uh, hats and all kinds of stuff. What, what everybody was needing in wintertime because Estonia is a quite cold country in the wintertime. Right. So it was like most like Estonian gloves and Estonian mittens are like very well known throughout the world and they have specific uh, designs on them like was she a traditional knitter like was she also like taught by generations of knitters prior to her uh probably yeah because uh, estonian people yeah they can do everything women especially they can uh, build a house if they, if it is necessary <laughs> in <dream. laughs> so uh yes uh, my grandmother i never saw her she, she died before I was born, but uh, she was a uh, sewer. So uh, uh, but probably she could knit and uh, make other things too. So, right. yes. Well, do you remember your early projects? Like, I think it was a shawl, simple primitive shawl, but uh, I, I, I don't think I have it anymore. This is long gone with all, all those moves we, we made in, uh, in Estonia and now here too, so I don't have it anymore. <laughs> well, what's what, like, was there ever a period of time when you weren't knitting or was knitting always part of your life? Uh, I think I was knitting when, when, when I needed something, when I need a hat, needed a hat or shawl or, uh, or sweater. Sweaters came actually later because uh, this is a uh, little bit uh, step further this is not so simple to make just like that I am making a sweater and uh, in my childhood this is this was kind of a difficult time to find uh, interesting patterns this was all very very limited we don't, did not have uh, all kind of magazines or uh, things that I could find ah this is patterns that I like I will make it this was very uh, you could see several people carrying same sweaters or same shawls <laughs> like this. So when you were in school, like, was it a cool thing to learn how to do all the handcrafts, like all the, or was it like a chore and like something you didn't enjoy? I did enjoy knit knitting mostly, but uh, there were also girls who did not like it. it this was simply obligation to, to, to do and get it done, get the mark as good as possible and then uh, forget it. <laughs> but uh, there were people who, who liked it and probably they continued it from this time already. So, Was it for a number of years that you were taught knitting? Uh, we had to make something in every class. So we started, it was Charles the first thing. Uh, then was 
I think it was mittens and then were socks or something like that. Right. Yeah. It's fine because like I grew up in, in Siberia and we didn't have knitting as part of it, like which would make sense, right? Because it's such a cold place. Yes. But yeah. it was only we, we did sewing and there was like basic embroidery, but somehow not never knitting. Like knitting yeah. was not taught. So I wish somebody would teach it in school. <laughs> yeah. So like, okay, you need your for necessity basically at that point like just what you really want to wear yes how do you come to becoming a knitwear designer oh, it's <laughs> happened actually recently uh, i bought a pattern it was about maybe two years ago or something and then i downloaded it and it was like less than three pages and then I made it, it was so simple, this uh, sweater. And uh, then I was thinking that I can do it too. This is, how difficult can it be? <laughs> so I started before, uh, when I made sweaters or something, I, I changed something always, what, what I liked or what, what, uh, what I was uh, finding beautiful. But uh, I, I could not say that this was my design, but uh, now, I made some <laughs> that I can call my designs already. Well, what was that process like? The first pattern you published, were you uh, nervous? Like, did you feel like this is it? Uh, this is the big test? This was, uh, I was nervous, yes. I could not sleep on first night when I published it because I, I was thinking, will, will I get negative comments or will I get bad reactions if somebody bought this pattern or something like that? But so far, it was all uh, positive. First sweater was, this was panda sweater, which is uh, brown and beige color. And uh, I made it only two sizes, actually. I, I did not uh, dare to make so <laughs> big choice of, and it was, yeah, I learned it later, actually. What was your connection with pandas like? Why was your first sweater with pandas? Because uh, pandas are cute animals and uh, they are, mm, yeah, this is more easier to, to knit or make pattern from than uh, to make pattern from, for example, pangolin or, or some difficult animal who has a lot of details. This was, uh, I, I wanted to make most kind of realistic panda shape and uh, I did not want to copy this uh, uh, WWF uh, logo you know <laughs> so this was a little bit different and I was quite happy with it so it's in the world now. <laughs> but was it difficult for you to come up with the like how to write the pattern like what information to put in the pattern how much to explain in the pattern? I was uh, reading a lot of drops design patterns, patterns before how, how they were made and uh, I, I learned from there basically and uh, it was yeah it was good school actually and I, I, I bought some several patterns before fr from other people too so to to see how this construction was made and how those calculations are made so principles I, I, I learned from other people and other other designers so when you posted that first pattern, what was the reaction? Like, what was the reception of the pattern? Uh, lots of people put it in, in favorites. I was amazed that it was growing. So I, I did not know what to expect at all. So it, it was like within a week, it was 50 favorites. This was already a big thing for me. So I did not expect anything at all. So I, I, this was just a test, this uh, publishing this pattern. If it would not go, I would uh, take it down and I would finish this. But uh, then I was still, still thinking that maybe I will make another one and another one. So <laughs> now I'm what busy. Was, what was your reaction when you saw somebody else make your pattern for the first time? Uh, I was very happy, of course, that uh, this actually two people uh, who bought this pattern, they actually made the project, but uh, there are a lot of people who are simply buying this pattern, but they, they never 
if I see that the person who buys pattern and it does, he does not or she does not have a photo or any story about uh, herself, then I know that there will be no project. <laughs> right. I mean, honestly, like Ravelry is funny this way because I use it like myself predominantly to just buy patterns. Uh, yes. So unless I'm test knitting for somebody, it takes me forever to post the project, even though I have all the information and I have all the pictures, it's still like this one extra step that I often don't do. I think to make project for from somebody else's pattern, it is much easier than, than to make your own whole project and publish the patent. And you have to do much more work than, than just put photos and some choice what your what your is and so so yes so okay so the first project was received favorably did you have an ambition at that point of how many patterns you're going to release what no. next you're going to work on no 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 i did not have any plan at all i was thinking yes if if step one if i would get ever this uh, money back, what I spend it on yarns, and I will be already very happy. So <laughs> I, I will I to get a millionaire or something like to <laughs> this is not happening. Thank you. I think so. Well, what was your like marketing approach? How did you advertise that, those patterns? First patterns, not at all. <laughs> I simply put it on, and I was waiting what was happening. But uh, then I saw how people uh, on Instagram do it. And so I, I, I tried to learn something from it. And so I, I am growing, let's say. <laughs> so what, like when you do the pattern now, yes. how do you treat it? Like, how do you market it? How do you test it? How, how do you take those wonderful pictures? Like, tell me your process. Uh, yes, I am trying to take... Uh, some favorable, beautiful pictures, if I may call them so. <laughs> but, but then I am in several uh, Facebook groups. I, I, I try to put something there first to, to, to find the testers. And then, uh, yes, if, if this pattern is released, then to find, yeah, to advertise it a little bit. I, I will try to make a little bit. Uh, first week of publishing I will make a little discount on this pattern and uh, yes that, that that is it I am not big marketer or something like that so I am still learning <laughs> well I mean do you feel like you ever become an expert designer or do you feel like it's just the life learning journey I think it will be the second one <laughs> I, I I don't know I never learned any things things about marketing or or such a I, I am not big influencer either so this is a big learning process it will be probably who inspires you on Instagram or on Ravelry like you that you who would stop you like if you're scrolling through Instagram what kind of picture would stop you to take a look at it I don't know what I have, but I have some kind of connection with circular yokes. I don't know why I like them so much. It's fair isle knitting. I like it in very much. And if people could put, I know it's very difficult because uh, you, you have to make increase to make it round. But then you have to fit your, your thing into, into this uh, round. And this is, I know that this is not easy, but if people can manage, managing to put there some, I don't know, exotic animals or some, I saw on Instagram that somebody has a, a, a little row of uh, different birds. It's fantastic. <laughs> I like it so much. So this kind of uh, things are catching my eye always on Instagram. How do you come up with your ideas of what you're gonna create next? Mostly it is coincidence or, or I see some kind of detail somewhere that I, I like very much. And then I am, I'm beginning to think that can I work it somewhere in my uh, thing, what I am busy with or something like that. So it's uh, about details. Okay. 
what I well, see. The first time like I saw something that stopped me in my tracks, it was those the, that pair of gloves that you yeah. <laughs> And I immediately like called David and like, we have to put it on the cover of Neither's Gonna Need. So <laughs> you like, you were the cover girl for a week. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it only third day. It was already on there because I did not check this uh, Facebook page every day. And uh, so I was oh, very much <laughs> surprised at what is that. Right. Well, tell me more about the design of those gloves because they have like so many elements to them first of all they are knitted on one millimeter needles which is yes, like yes. Even impossible for many knitters right i mean it's very like yes. secondly there is like lace element there is a fair isle element mm -hmm. and they have all the fingers so like, <laughs> have you worried about the reception of that and how many people are actually technically capable of knitting those? Actually, I, I made those gloves and I was not planning to make a pattern at all. I, I simply put picture of it and then I got so many positive reactions and people were asking, when is pattern gonna come? When is pattern gonna come? So I was thinking, okay, maybe I should try, try to write a pattern. And it took me maybe even two weeks to write it down because this is this is not so easy as a sweater <laughs> for me <laughs> and then uh, yeah this pattern was there then i finally found a few testers and only one survived it <laughs> who who really made it the glove till till the end she was uh, having also troubles because i know it is if you are using uh, two two and a half millimeter needles or something, then uh, to switch one millimeter needles, this is this is uh, tiring in beginning. Later you you will get used to it, but uh, then yes, she made it, and then I put it uh, on, and it got very very uh, positive response. So I was amazed actually. <laughs> and it has a Latvian braid also, right on the top. Yes. Yes. Do, you, do you have them somewhere near you? Could you show yes. us? Yes, I have. I mean, they're exquisite, like that lace detail on the front and the whole fair aisle and the little Latvian braids. Like, I just, I, th I think they're like amazing. <laughs> Actually, Estonian knitters are making fine gloves already centuries. So I, I actually may not think that this is something so special. This is something what Estonian women have knitted for centuries, so. Well, they just, I, uh, that amazing for centuries, that's. I, I thought that if they could make it 200 years ago, then I have to be able to make with electricity and light and everything that this would be not a problem, so. Well, Estonians are also like well known for the noops and the lace fine lace shawls. Yes. And it's a funny story, like uh, how the noops came to be. So basically like Estonian lace was sold by the weight and to make it weight more, Estonian mm -hmm. ladies were very clever and they added these little noops, which is like, it looks almost like a little bead, right? Yeah, you, you need it, you create it with yarn. And because it uses like five or seven repetition of the yarn, yes. it, it just weighs that much more. So like the more noobs you add to the shawl, the, the heavier it is, the for more money you can sell it. What, like, <laughs> how, like when you were growing up, right? Was that part of your surroundings? Did you see those shawls? Like, was it your ambition to knit Estonian lace? I wanted to knit actually a very, very long time, but my first half solo shawl I made only last year, which I really completed, which I blocked and uh, lace. Oh. There are always elements of lace on, on, on sweaters or something. You can make a, a hat with, with lace, but uh, shawl, half solo shawl, this is, this is a tough thing. <laughs> this is not so easy. Right. So like when you needed that, was that like uh, coming home sort of like, because you, you know, it's part of the culture? 
yes, this is uh, a very dear, dear uh, garment to me now. And uh, actually, I knew that I will make this shawl sometime, but I could not choose which kind of pattern I will, <laughs> I will make because there are so many beautiful patterns. And finally, I found this on Ravelry. I bought it and I made it and I got a lot of positive reactions. But uh, uh, this is common thing in, thing in Estonia too. How long did it take you? Like, what was the learning experience with all the noobs and all the like lace? Uh, first repetition took me longest because actually noobs is uh, the place where, where you can make most mistakes. You will need need together too much or, or you will leave something behind then you will get too many stitches but uh, um, because uh, if you if you need it on next row you of pattern you can see that there is something not right you can find this mistake immediately actually so, so this is this is making it easier if, so if, if you see what, what you have been knit, knitting and you see that it has to be so much, but you have less or more, so you, you will start to look those noobs where, where, you, where you made your mistake. Mostly mistakes are coming from them, actually. Right. right. So right now you're working on this sweater that uses all those elements, right? Mm, yes, yes. Can you show try... like the... Can uh, you yes, show the idea the is to make it <laughs> from two different yarns. And that the ear on yoke will be one band of lace with butterflies, but uh, I am working on it. It is not yet. <laughs> I will be happy when, when I'm done with this motif there. Here it is. I hope so, it is recognized. It's so beautiful, actually. Um, how many turns of, for the noobs do you use? How many stitches for the noobs? Seven. Seven. Yes, I, I will make increase of seven stitches. Right. This is classic. Yeah, because like I'm like I've I've done some with five, and I think I've done the seven. Like there was like different variations on the how many yes. stitches you can. Nine and eleven. This will be too much already. I think it will be difficult to to knit also. Right. So like that idea for this sweater. Tell me how that came to be. I saw uh, sweaters on Instagram with uh, round yokes with, with different color, uh, but it is motive on, and this colors was reminding me like lace. And then I was thinking that maybe I should try if it is possible to make that this band is from real lace. So, and, and from same color shade. It is like wine red. I don't know if it is. It was visible. So like burgundy. Yeah, something like that. This so is how many more. how many things do you work on at the same time? Like right now, you're working on this sweater. Is there like other things in the works? Other things you in your mind, or is it? Are you like one project at the time, girl? Mostly I am working with one project at a time because it's a blue pair of gloves. This is waiting because I did not decide yet what kind of uh, motif or what kind of lace I will make. I know what I want, but uh, it is not decided yet. <laughs> I want something wavy on, on each finger. So this will be totally different uh, looking pair of gloves. But uh, yeah, meanwhile, I am making with uh, other sweater. <laughs> How long because, does it take you, like, from the beginning of the design idea to actually publishing this pattern? Like, how long do you would you say it takes you? Very long, because if if I want that somebody will test it, and uh, lots of testers have having uh, other jobs too, they are not professional testers or something. This can take months or two to make set, make a sweater or a pair of gloves. So I, I know for myself with all this experimenting and frogging, it can take easily one month to, to get the sweater actually. So 
it will take a long time. Who is your That's ideal why. tester? Who who would you say is your ideal tester? Uh, uh, good communicator. That uh, if there is something uh, what what uh, she does not understand or something, then then we communicate or find out what what is wrong. That I can uh, recalculate something or or uh, yes. And afterwards, uh, pictures would be nice, of course. That uh, I see happy faces with my design. <laughs> well, so now you live in Belgium, right? Yes. How did Belgium influence you? Like, is there something, as far as knitting goes, right? Is there something that surprised you? Is there something that influenced you? It's very sad to say, but no, actually, because it's it's really, really, I, I have very few uh, people from Belgium who are following me or who, who am I following. And uh, it's not so, handicraft is not so popular in Belgium. If, if I go to yarn shops and uh, I want to cry, actually, <laughs> it's so sad. When I'm buying yarn, I am bringing it mostly from Estonia. Really? Yes. How did that change from your childhood? Like, is it easier to buy like Habsalu yarn now than it was back in your childhood? Yes. Is there like much more selection? Yes. yes. Before, I don't even remember that uh, I, I, I saw anywhere this kind of fine yarn to make Habsalu shawls. This was something I don't know where people got it actually. For sweaters, this was not so fine yarn. This was much thicker that uh, this was to get everywhere. But uh, fine yarn, I don't remember. This was this was more difficult, I think. Right. Well, you mentioned to me that you were also doing beaded jewelry besides, uh, you know, dabbling and knitting. How much? How important was that in your life? Uh, before, I made it a lot before COVID especially because then I went to those uh, um, hobby uh, event, events and so that I could uh, buy a lot of different materials and there were workshops and uh, things, but with COVID, everything stood still. So. For two years, I, I think I did not make anything from, from beads. How is it similar in your view or how is it different from knitting? It's also very fine, mostly, because I am using those Japanese seed beads and very fine things to, to get uh, more details in things what I'm making or something. And uh, it's comparable, but... Uh, at the same time, it's very different because, yeah. I mean, if you had to choose one, right? Like, would you be, would you choose beading or would you choose the knitting? Knitting, definitely knitting. Yes. Is it just more comforting? Is it like why? Um, I don't know. Knitting, I can take anywhere with me, but beading, I have to sit still in uh, at the table and my beads and things are ready everywhere so so i i cannot uh... right well what happens to all the things that you need do you wear it all do you gift it do you make it for commissions no 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 it's mostly or, or for myself or for my daughter my husband finds everything to to warm so he does not need it <laughs> What's the oldest knitted item that you still have? Uh, I, I think I have a one headband what I made. It was it was some time ago. It was a uh, actually it was shawl and uh, I ripped it up and then I used this yarn to make uh, and I added white color there and I made a headband. And then second old thing is uh, is a doily, lace doily, what I made. It was some kind of uh, 
old magazine that appeared and there were a lot of uh, different toilets I remember and uh, I, I learned I made some little one and it was actually very easy for me to make it and then I was thinking why to make not bigger one and then I took probably biggest pattern what there was 150 rounds or something and then I made it by but I took two two fine yeah thread it is not yarn it was straight because this is from cotton and uh, it came out I think it is less than 80 centimeters diameter <laughs> are you a tight knitter in general it seems so because uh, when I see some test knitters are making uh, remarks also that they they have difficulties to get this scorch yeah yes that is I thought that I am knitting normally, but it seems not. I guess we all think that we're knitting normally and then we figure out <laughs> that we all want to the spectrum. Very, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I thought I was knitting normally and then I was like looser than anybody else in the neighborhood. So somehow yeah, I figured so out. I, I was very impressed of your uh, little secret shawl. This was amazing. <laughs> I actually made two because yeah. I made I made we had the we had two different knit alongs in Fine Shetland Lace Group. So the first one, it was like the group was still very young because I joined that group from, from like the first I was like one of the first uh, handful of members. And we did like one knit along and it was probably 20 people. And then the second time we did a long knit along for the same show, it was like 200 people. So it was like different mm. animals all together. <laughs> so I have two of those and I, I mean, it's beautiful design. Yes, it is. And especially when you show it against light that it is almost invisible. This is fantastic. This is right. very beautiful. Well, is that your ambition to knit a super fine Estonian lace at some point that you can put through the wedding ring? Uh, yes, but uh, I am afraid that if it is with noops, noops that then, then it will be difficult. Or it has to be quite a big ring. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I don't know, people are saying that they, they can put it through even with noops, but uh, I think it is too much work to risk it, to get this snoop through this uh, rings that it's not worth it to risk it. It's beautiful to see if people are doing it elegantly. So hopla, it's, it's true, but. Uh... I must tell you, I was interviewing Suzanne de Rosa and she has this antique gossamer shawl that she mm -hmm. bought somewhere. And I was like, well, is that, because the shawl is enormous. Like it's uh, like a bedspread, basically. It's like over six feet wide. And I asked her, well, do you think it's something you can pull through the wedding ring? And she just took her ring off and she was like, let's see. And like during the interview, she pulls that shawl very easily through the ring. And she's like, I know it's probably a stupid idea, but like, <laughs> here it goes. You know? Yeah. So she's uh, the brave one. With Shetland lace, it will be easier. Right, because it doesn't have the nose. little nose. Yes. Yeah. So what are you, like, what's your plans for this year? Like how far and ahead you thinking? Mm. I found that this uh, rhythm, like uh, that some, something is in testing and I am working on something else, that this is, this is good rhythm for me. Because when I am too busy with things and the, when life is getting too hectic and my daughter is saying that, don't forget, this is your hobby. This is not your work. Your life is not depending on it. So <laughs> it is, yeah, it, it, it is my hobby, actually. This is not uh, that, yeah. Well, how supportive is your family in general about your knitting? Uh, they are supportive, my husband and my daughter. My daughter is actually uh, <laughs> reading my she's reading the first edition of my patterns she's uh, picking some things up what the, what what the expressions are not correct for according to her or something like that because english is not my my mother tongue so <laughs> i can make very <laughs> weird stupid uh, mistakes there does she wear what you make for her yes she's wearing is she a neater 
I teach her. She knows basic, but she's not knit. She, oh, she, 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 like not yet. I hope not yet, but uh, we never know. We will see. Yeah, we don't lose hope. We we thinking that the our kids will get would, to that one day. It would be nice because I have so many, uh, yeah, so many books and so many. Uh, yes, I can. I could teach her, but if she does not want, I cannot force her. So when it comes to books, right, and you mentioned that you basically learn everything yourself, like after your mom taught you the basics, mm -hmm. what would make you to buy a book? Um, it has to be definitely something what I don't know or, or cannot do it, what, what I want to learn, something like that. Last time when I was in Estonia, I bought this uh, uh, historical Estonian knitting book. It is fantastic. It is so much to learn that uh, it's amazing. <laughs> you feel like it's your role just because you were born there to carry this tradition and to like put it in your designs and to make it make sure that it continues to be alive? A little bit, yes. And if, if I can, then I will try to keep it a little bit ethnical, if, if I can. Pandas is not, not of course, <laughs> something else. But <laughs> but, well, talk, uh, talking about panda, right? So you mentioned to me that there is no way you can find anything gray in your yarn stash. No. So like, what's your approach to yarn? You come to the yarn store. Yes. Do you do you buy yarn for specific project? Do you just buy yarn because something jumps at you and you're like, oh, I love that color and I have to have it? How <laughs> planned are you at your purchases? I, I am open to all options. <laughs> if, if if I see something very 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 beautiful, what is catching my eyes, and uh, and I will buy it without any concrete idea behind it. That but what I'm gonna make, then I will figure it out later. <laughs> But sometimes ever... I will go with uh, with, def with with ready-made decisions that I need this or this or this, and I will start to search. Right. Have you ever like looked at your yarn stash at some particular skein and told yourself like, what was I thinking when I bought it? Mm. Last year, I I bought yarn from internet. And uh, it was a little bit disappointment because um, I like violet color, but I am not wearing it myself, actually. And uh, it was like uh, old pink on photo, but it, when it came, it was completely lavender color or something like that. And th this is still standing and waiting for me doing something with it because uh, it's I am not yet over of this disappointment that how how come colors can be so different on photos and in and in reality. Well, is it ever like surprising to you to use something that you didn't think is gonna go together, and then like you start putting it together, and suddenly like you're amazed at the combination? Mm, it can happen, but uh, mostly I have some kind of plan. So, yeah. so when you see like other like testers or other knitters knitting your patterns and they're using whatever their choice of colors right is it ever surprising do you ever think like oh i should have used that combination uh, yes uh, because my second panda sweater is now in testing and um I was thinking that uh, yeah, this color combination that there is there is not so much choice, something light and something dark, but uh, two people actually are using one is using purple as dark color and one is using purple as light color. Interesting. Yes, so it will be pandas with amethyst color. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why not? <laughs> yes, why not? In, in, indeed. People can do if if they are happy with it. Why not? I am happy too. So, like when you don't need, what what else do you do? 
I am looking outlander. <laughs> this is so many seasons. I started, I think, two weeks ago. I am still with, busy with end of season one. <laughs> this is, uh, and I looked at Shetland, this uh, series. This is also, if I am looking uh, some films, I like those detectives, those Scandinavian and Nordic type detective films. This is okay. fantastic. Well, when you watch Outlander, pay attention. There is yes, one I, scene where Claire... I heard so, so many right. things about this. That, that's why I started to look it. <laughs> well, there is a particular scene where Claire wraps herself in fine Shetland lace shawl and looks out of the window. And Monique Boonstra recreated that shawl from a picture. Mm -hmm. And it's called Shetland Stars. And it's now like a pattern of hers on Ravelry. So catch yeah. that show in the movie there is one other uh, very famous pattern this was uh, uh, i think it was touch movie the killings and there was this anna anna lind this uh, Faroe island sweater with white and black and this is world famous now this is like uh, everybody is buying it or is buying this pattern this is i, I have been actually in this uh, this shop of this Gudrun, Gudrun and Gudrun in, in Faroe Faro island, Islands. And uh, it was there, I was, I had to, I, I could touch it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like, I, I find myself a lot of times, like when I'm looking at some historical movies or series, TV series, I miss what the movie is about because I'm concentrating on the needs that they're wearing. <laughs> Then you have to second time. And, and I'm like, one second, let me just take a picture of that sweater. <laughs> yeah, now it's functions that you can put on pause and you can take pictures or you, you can scroll back before, yeah, 30 years ago, it, it did not exist. Well, I mean, when you knitting for yourself, yeah. is that a certain style? Like, is there something you always need for yourself? Or do you like to experiment with different styles? I knit what I like and where, where, with what I'm feeling simply comfortable. Like this is not not specific style or anything, I think. If you were to like, just like, because some of your patterns are very challenging, right? Like those gloves, like you have to pay attention. You can't really like no. do it on the waiting room of the dentist, you know? It's no, like, you is, can't. Yeah. when you knit, like, do you need like what you're in the mood for like is there a simple project and a complicated project and you decide on what to need in between those uh th those gloves were actually too I, I was finished with with a sweater and then i was thinking that i will make now something small <laughs> so i started with those gloves and then i had I don't know what I was thinking with this one, one millimeter needles. I thought with one week, I will be ready. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it took me, I think, three weeks to make them. But I, 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 I am working too. So it was not that I, I woke up and I started to knit those gloves. I, I, I went to work sometimes too. But uh, yeah. Like, because you moved from one country to another, when you think of comfort food, do you think of Estonian food or do you think about Belgian food? Um, I don't know actually. There are, I miss Estonian bread because this is, uh, uh, I don't know how it is called in English. This, uh, they, they make some, they put something in there to, to make it uh, exit to, to, I don't know how, how this word is in English. And this, this is uh, very special. You don't, you don't find it so much uh, elsewhere. It, this is what I am missing. When I'm going to Estonia, I'm buying, first thing I buy is bread. <laughs> <laughs> how often do you go back? How often do you find yourself back there? Uh, I am uh, mostly two times a year. In summer once and uh, around Christmas time or February, something like that. So if you were to move now, like if you had to move again, 
what would you bring with you like 100%? Like what's important to have with you? Oh. Like to go to on deserted island or uh, or uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I will take my knitting needles and and uh, and and some books, definitely. Maybe some some of my stash too. <laughs> well, I hope you don't have to be on deserted island knitting. <laughs> I hope you stay with us for a long time, and I can't wait to see. All your upcoming designs, very excited. And I'm so glad that you're part of Knitter's Gonna Knit, you know, because I love seeing your projects there. Thank you so very much for being my guest today. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It was a nice chat. I really enjoyed it. Thank you.